Hey there, Scorpio. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to September of 2022. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. Please keep in mind, guys, that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. <clears throat> now, we're going to be looking at the energies for you for the month of September from the point of view of true sidereal astrology. If you are not familiar with true sidereal astrology, I highly encourage you to keep it here. Smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below letting me know how this resonates for you, but also subscribe and hit that notification bell to get notifications of all the other messages that we have coming through here. We do practice true sidereal astrology on this channel, so if you would like to learn more or just get into a more of a vibe with it, then definitely keep it here. We're going to be looking at this from true sidereal astrology, like I said, <clears throat> and this energy could definitely resonate for you, whether you're a Scorpio, sun, moon, or rising, but just keep in mind that when I'm talking about where the placements of the planets are in terms of the houses, that's going to resonate most for the Scorpio rising peeps out there. Um, but energy, this energy still could resonate for you in terms of that. Yeah. All right, Scorpio, let's get into this. So as I was channeling for you, um, while I was looking at the chart, Scorpio, the first thing that I heard was, I don't care about it, quote unquote. And that could very well been have an issue, but could have very well have been an issue for you for an extended period of time. But I feel like the dynamics lately have been pushing you to care more about something else other than just your own point of view, okay? For my Scorpio risings, you have Mars transiting through Taurus in your seventh house. Your seventh house is typically ruled by Libra. Seventh house is um, all about balance and harmony. It could in incorporate or could in talk about legal situations, um, but also it's really just about a social balance. And I feel like the big challenge for you right now um, we're just looking at, at <clears throat> excuse me, we're just looking at September right now, but kind of feeling through this and seeing how the planets are going to be moving through. Um, this could be a challenge for you for, you know, a few months down the road. However, here in September, I feel like we're really dealing with the bulk of this challenge. With Mars moving through uh, Taurus for all of us, really, but with Mars moving through Taurus, uh, Mars being one of your ruling planets, and that's the planet I'm going to focus on here because that is one of the personal planets. Your other ruling planet is Pluto, but that one doesn't move so much, so let's just talk about Mars. But um, with Mars moving through Taurus, um, that gives you a very tenacious energy. Whatever it is that you're looking to build or develop, I feel like um, it, it, it gives you that wherewithal, that drive, okay? But for you, Scorpio, Mars being in Taurus does kind of feel pretty challenging, mainly because Taurus is your opposite sign, okay? And while you're a water sign, Taurus is an earth sign. So there's a very real, very practical, and I'm feeling very down-to-earth energy that is being expressed or um, accentuated for you during this time. And again, for my Scorpio risings here, here, Mars is moving through your seventh house. So that really is where the bulk of this energy of feeling like you're being driven to be very down to earth, very practical, or get very real with yourself about how it is you're interacting with the rest of the collective or with the people around you. Okay. Now you maybe have been, you may have been doing a lot or experiencing a lot in terms of taking better care of yourself with Uranus moving through his transit of Aries in your sixth house. But Mars's movement through Taurus, through your seventh house, could be forcing you to really take a balanced approach to this, especially um, if and when others are involved. That is a very big thing. The big dynamic this month, Scorpio, is... Um, between uh, the new moon that we had on August 27th uh, of this year, um, which was in Leo, and then the, the full moon that we're going to be having on the 9th, late into the 9th, early 10th, of uh, September, the full moon is going to be in the constellation of Aquarius. That's another air sign, just like Libra, which is the ruler of your seventh house, which is a big ac accent for you at the moment. Um, uh, but also Aquarius is all about um, integrating and balancing and harmonizing with the collective, revolutionizing things for the greater good. There, That right there with the full, I'm sorry, the new moon having been in Leo, all about your sense of personal expression, um, but then also like s setting the record straight or 
wiping the slate clean in terms of that, you know, having a new beginning. But then by the time we reach the full moon, which is the 9th and 10th of September, I feel like this is really going to come out in terms of bringing your expression out into the world and working on or giving you the power to balance that with the people around you in order to have a greater sense of harmony here. Okay, for you, the moon, the, the, the full moon is going to be uh, in your fourth house, Scorpio rising. So the fourth house is your house of uh, nurturance and your home and family life. Um, all of this energy, I really feel like Scorpio, all of this energy is influencing you to do better in terms of um, being a, a team player or incorporating yourself with the greater collective. Okay, um, this is bringing... Uh, this is bringing feelings of how could you be cleaning up your act? No matter how your ego may up, end up hurt or bruised in this situation, keep in mind that whatever changes could be made for you uh, are for the benefit, are for your benefit in the end, okay? And with Mars being in um, in Taurus here, I feel like even though it will probably be uncomfortable for you in terms of really bringing things down to earth or really making some sort of physical manifestation manifestation of this real it's ultimately going to help you okay if you can really uh, if you can really challenge yourself to draw on those energies of mars being in taurus it could definitely give you a much more practical approach you really could use this for your advantage here yeah the chariot is the first card that just came out for you here it's all about driving you forward okay it's about getting in alignment making sure that you're in alignment to make sure that the best possible outcome is for yourself yes but also that has to be balanced with the people around you or just the surrounding world okay let's look at the chart all right so um, here you go. You have the chart here for September of 2022. As you can see, Mars is in your seventh house here, is going to be moving through your seventh house for quite some time, all right? This transit of Mars moving through Taurus is going to be until late uh, March of 2022, or I'm sorry, 2023, okay? Now, as the month starts out, you have a trine between Mars and Mercury. That's the other thing that we want to focus on for this month. We do have Mercury going retrograde this month. Um, and that retrograde starts around the 9th of September and lasts until the 1st of October. All right. So with Mars and um, Mars trining with Mercury, okay, a trine is... It is a pretty easy energy to work with. However, what I feel like is happening here and what just because what's just confirmed by the Tarot, you have the Ace of Swords with the Chariot. I feel like this is this trine between Mars and Mercury. See, Mercury is in your 11th house as well. Communication and balance and harmony between you and the rest of the world around you or you and your public circle, maybe even you and... Um, your friends and family ultimately by the time, well, I'm sorry, your family life and how you nurture yourself ultimately by the time we reach the full moon, that is a really big um, accent for you. I really feel like that's being accented for you this month. And with this trine between Mars and Mercury, it's bringing forward how you have been moving forward, or it's bringing to your awareness ways that you have been moving forward. And what I'm uh, uh, ways that you've been moving forward, how it is you express yourself, maybe even a strong self centered energy that could be coming into focus for you to give you an understanding of what needs to be healed and how you can change this. Okay, let's keep moving forward here um so mercury is going to be going retrograde starting at the ninth mercury is moving forward uh in your 11th house but then is going to be retrograding backwards from uh your 11th house back into your 10th house and this is really where i feel like there's a strong energy of um making or um making it very clear actually how it is you've been interacting with the greater collective which just came out here there you go the ten of swords and with this awareness scorpio of how it is you've been moving forward the ace of swords and the chariot okay 
ultimately this is bringing you an understanding of how things can be ended or how certain difficult situations can be brought to a close. Again, when, when I'm talking about that Scorpio, I'm really being drawn back to Mars being in Taurus, giving you really strong levels of practical application, okay? How can, how can you make this happen or make this change so that you can get into greater alignment, probably with what it is that you dream of, but also there is an element here of bringing balance. The temperance just came out. Balance between you and other people around you. That is a really big message, a really big energy for you during this time. Now, with Mercury moving retrograde, Mercury is going to be moving retrograde um, from your 11th house to your 10th house. Your 10th house is the energies of your career and finances, or at, the, or at least not, just, not necessarily just your finances, but like your career... Uh, um, aspirations or just your long-term goals, but also the 10th house is how the public sees you, your public image with Mercury moving retrograde from your 11th house to your 10th house. First of all, I'm feeling like this could bring forward an understanding of how you could better go about achieving your goals and desires. Okay. Um, also your career aspirations or your long-term goals. It could very well be that you are one of your long-term goals right now is to have a better relationship relationship with the general society or a better relationship with the people that are closest to you because by the time we do reach the full moon here which is right around this time, September 9th, late hours of September 9th into early September 10th. You're, the moon is in Aquarius in your fourth house, okay? And actually, the four of wands did just show itself, but I didn't pull it out here. But um, how you can better love and care, not only yourself, care for yourself, but also for the other people around you, okay? Big, big focus for you this month in how you can better have, a, uh, how you can have a better relationship with the people around you, how you can bring more harmony into your life in terms of those that are closest to you or those that you really truly love, okay? Um, let's see, moving forward here, moving forward here. So with Mercury moving retrograde through your 11th house back into your 10th house in the constellation of Virgo, Virgo being one of Mercury's ruling signs, um, but Virgo is also about health and wellness and um, uh, your uh, routines and all that kind of stuff. Mercury retrograde through the constellation of Virgo is giving you an express opportunity to really work on bettering your life, bettering yourself. Like I said, uh, bettering your routines also give you a chance to rewrite that programming or rewrite your movement forward, how it is you proceed forward on a soul level. This is really getting down, especially with the chariot here. Here, the chariot to the ace of swords. This is really giving me an energy of your soul level expression, how it is you just naturally do things, okay? It is due for a shape up. That's what I'm hearing. But all of the energies this month are really giving you the opportunity to make that shape up. Now, uh, uh, in keeping in alignment with this Virgo energy here, like I said, Uranus is moving through Aries. And for you, that's in your sixth house, which is in fact ruled by Virgo. Mer Uranus has been moving through Aries for about the last year and a half or so. Um, and that really could be putting forward a bringing forward changes that you can make to yourself, how you can reshape yourself, how you can revolutionize yourself. Scorpio, I really feel like this is coming to a head this month, or at least the, the beginning, you're beginning to start to find a way to move forward, okay? Yeah, look at this. Five of Cups with the Seven of Pentacles. I really feel very strongly that this month, Scorpio, there is going to be a realization, or you're at least you're going to be able to understand how it is that... Um, You've been receiving certain results in terms of the collective, maybe with this being the pentacles, maybe your career and finances. But yes, that's going to bring a level of sorrow here because it's uh, because there you're I feel like you're really going to be able to recognize or see how you've been losing out or how you've been missing out. I really feel what I'm hearing right now for you, Scorpio, is that this month you're getting a clear view as to how you're not receiving the fruits of your labor that you really truly desire. But also when it comes to the people around you and your social associations, I feel like you're going to be able to see how your social interactions may have been hindering you or get a very clear view of how your, your social interactions or how you've been relating to the people around you or lack thereof have been giving you a negative uh, payout or been giving you negative results, okay? 
um, with that Five of Cups. Anything else you want to say about that Five of Cups? The thing about it, Scorpio, is that yes, there may be there may be disappointment in yourself. There may be disappointment in in the fruits of your labor or what it is you've been receiving. But remember, keep in mind that even though the Five of Cups does represent loss and the grief that is re related to that loss, all is not completely lost because you're still being provided with a way out. You're still being provided with a chance to balance the circumstances and to find harmony okay between you and the people around you or and really I'm still kind of getting a bit of a selfish energy here and I don't mean that in a negative way because Mars transiting through Taurus can be a bit of a selfish energy or at least can just be a very self-centered energy I feel like this is all in terms of getting what you want getting the results that you want and this month the focus right for you Scorpio is how can I better interact with the people around me so that I get a better result? I mean, if you want a certain thing, you're just going to have to play the role in some cases, okay? This is all, but again, there we go. And that's what I mentioned earlier. I have in my notes that no matter how your ego may end up bruised at this time or during this process, Scorpio, ultimately it's serving you. It's serving you because it's giving you Ace of Swords in the Chariot. It's giving you a better understanding of how it is you need to move forward to better re get the results that you really truly deserve. To end the processes or end the, the, the situations or circumstances that are only hindering you in terms of receiving exactly what it is that you want, okay? This is a really beautiful energy, but I also want to, I really want to reiterate that, yeah, see, okay, uh, the Nine of Swords just came out here. It's in reverse, and I was just about to talk about the Mars in Taurus energy. Again, you have to get down to earth. You have to get very practical about it, okay? You can't just let things flow. I know you're a water sign. You're very flowy. You're able to take the container or the shape of the container that you're put within, but you're really, uh, for many of you, I feel like that that's kind of the problem. Um, um, you're having trouble or you're, you're, yeah, you're having trouble finding a way to fit into what is required of you in order to get what it is that you want. But if you really draw on Mars being in Taurus, your ruling planet of being in Taurus, that's going to support you with the practical application, the practical mindset even of being able to fit in that certain container to get exactly what it is that you want. All right, Scorpio? I'm really encouraging you. Spirit is really encouraging you. The divine God source creator, the universe, whatever you want to call it, is really encouraging you to allow Mars being in your opposite sign of Taurus to really teach you how to be practical in terms of this. And to like really, even though, yes, this is still kind of a self-centered energy, it's really about how you can get what it is that you want, how you can break with the status quo of your own emotions or with the status quo of how it is you true how it is you've been conducting yourself okay this is taurus the, the, uh, the hierophant is reversed here um but don't it, it, it's providing you with an opportunity to really shape things up but the fear of it and the pain surrounding it is really could be what's hindering you or holding you back i really want to give you i, I really want to say allow yourself to feel through this okay you're a water sign so intrinsically it's easier for you to feel through your emotions or to allow yourself to be uh, 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 emotionally aware but the hardest part about this is you have to switch up some things or change up your things within yourself, some processes within yourself. But also keep in mind, Scorpio, a great way to encourage yourself here is to keep in mind that this is all meant to serve you. This is all meant to recognize or help you recognize how to get, how to go about a better way of getting what it is that you want. Yeah, just a second. We have a card that's fallen out here. It's the Seven of Cups. All right, let me switch the view here because I want to look deeper into this Seven of Cups energy for you. Clarify this Seven of Cups for Scorpio. There it is right there, Scorpio. 
the seven of cups with the queen of cups. Face the emotional aspects of this self, of, of, of yourself, within yourself. Face the emotional situations. If you're very confused during this time period, all you really need to do is center yourself and go within and work to understand what your emotions are or what you're feeling in terms of this. Regardless as to what that tells you, it is going to give you an opportunity to have a greater understanding of what it is you need to do in order to move forward. All right, Scorpio? Yeah, five of swords is at the bottom of the deck. You have to stop fighting against this. You have to be, it has to be less of a competition, less about me, 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 and ultimately just put down the sword of self-sabotage or maybe just sabotaging in terms of others and start to focus on who it is you truly are, what it is you truly want, and getting into alignment with that so that you can receive what it is that you want. All right, Scorpio? Closing message, closing, closing message for my Scorpios here. Closing message for Scorpio, please. How do you want to close this session, this reading for Scorpio spirit? Ah, you have the Seven of Swords with the Wheel of Fortune. There's a strong level of deception that I'm picking up on here. But if you want your circumstances to change, you got to stop being deceptive. And the first thing you got to do is start stop being deceptive with yourself. I want, I really, please don't take this the wrong way, Scorpio. I mean this with all the love in the world, but you got to stop being deceptive. Uh, we just got to stop lying to yourself. You got to be honest and real with yourself about it. Your long-term goals do depend on it, but ultimately you can reach those goals. You can reach those goals, but you have to be truthful with yourself. Ace of Swords, Seven of Swords, if you're going to change the circumstances or change your fortune moving forward, Wheel of Fortune. Okay? All right, Scorpio. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really, truly hope this was helpful for you. Please make sure to smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Shoot me an email if you would like to get a personal reading with me, whether that be from the guise of true sidereal astrology or just a general tarot reading. And also, if you're interested in getting your true sidereal chart, your birth chart, free of charge, then definitely hit me up. Leave me an email. Uh, shoot me an email providing me with the information, and I will be more than happy to send you your chart free of charge. But with that said, Scorpio, I hope you have a fantastic month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Bye.